I don't know. I guess, I guess the best way to start is at the beginning. So the oldest thing here that I have collected or kept is this skateboard. And this is a 1986 Mark Gonzalez Pro Model by Vision. And I bought this board. I used to be into BMX. And I would hang out with this kid named Steve Mayer. And he had, he skated, and this was actually his board. And he had a quarter pipe in his garage, in his uh, driveway. And I'd go over his house and I'd ride my bike on it and I totally couldn't do anything. And then I was like, oh, can I try your board? And literally I remember the moment I stepped on his board, his driveway had this quarter, it was like two car garage. So two car garage here, quarter pipe here. This is how you approach the quarter pipe. And then right here is where his parents always parked their car outside the garage because there was so much junk in his garage. And right under where all the oil dripped, there was a hole in the, um, in the blacktop. And I remember tic-tacking, learning how to tic-tac around that hole in the driveway. And it was the first time I ever had that feeling of like being able to move on a skateboard without pushing with your foot. And I can remember it right now, like so clearly being so like stoked and just be like, oh my God, this feels so awesome. And then I don't know what I did with my bike after that. <laughs> I was kind of like, I just want a skateboard. And I remember he was buying a new skateboard and then he sold me this board and he sold me an old pair of Venture trucks. They were red, uh, GNS yo-yo yo wheels. I don't even know what the bearings, uh, NMB bearings. I remember they're like German bearings. And, uh, that was my, and this was my first skateboard. And I probably rode this I actually wrote it until it broke. Like this nose was how much it, not all this because you know, that's just from whatever, but uh, the tail broke off. Um, and then I got another Gons. I was a huge Gons fan. Um, Gons actually signed this last year for me. But uh, yeah, so this is, it's kind of crazy that I have my first skateboard. Like this is what that board looks like when it's, kind of new. You know what I mean? And this wasn't, this wasn't the same wheels. Uh, I don't even know what these are, but, uh, this is tracker trucks. Cause I believe Gons road tracker back then first, but this is an amazing like piece of history right here. Cause this board is barely skated. This was, I got this from a friend, um, who hooked me up with it. And the awesome thing about this board is, Probably the week that I got it from this guy, uh, I saw Gons outside in the street. His car broke down. Um, and I told him, I was like, oh, I got this board. And I said, wouldn't it be sick to, you know, for, for you to ride this board? You know what I mean? And I was like, so I ran upstairs because literally just downstairs. I ran upstairs and I, uh, I showed him the board. We were talking about an Oceanside contest, I believe in 1985 or 86. And he took the board and he recreated his run on Broadway of all the tricks he did back then. So that to me, cause I watched that, I watched that VHS so many times. So I actually had it memorized in my head and I'm like watching him do it like in front of me, like doing all the tricks, doing, you know, the kick flips and all that kind of, it's just, it was kind of crazy. It was kind of surreal. I actually videoed him doing it and I made a little edit of it and stuff, but uh, it was, I don't know, it was sick. out of my house and moved to New York I had so I'd collected so many Mark Gonzalez boards that but I couldn't take them with me so I had to throw them out which now anybody a collector would kill me but I had all these Gons boards it was like insane amount of Gons boards and I only have one <laughs> I don't have all of the most significant like boards that I've kept here I have some at our other house but uh you know, this is some of the stuff. And to me, this is kind of like one of the things I'm trying to looking for a year on here in 2004, 
uh, Vinny Ponti, uh, one of the Beastie Boys went into his shop, Rival, I think it was called, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, right. went into Rival and they were talking and they were, they were saying they have a new album coming out. And I think the story is that he told, or they told him the name of the album. And then maybe he, he connected me with them. But I know uh, someone from Capitol Records hit me up and Vinnie Ponti was mentioned in some regard. I don't know why. Um, I think he's the one that hooked it up though. And we ended up, the BC Boys were doing an album called To the Five Burrows. And they said, their marketing guy was like, hey, wouldn't it be sick to do a collab, make some skateboards? And these are the, this is the skateboard we made. Um, it's, I don't remember this guy. Uh, I think his name is like Marco or Mateo something. That's his signature. But uh, he did this, huge, they used this huge drawing of, he went on a boat around Manhattan and he drew the entire skyline all the way around. And I know there was online, there was a place where you could scroll and see the entire picture. It was pretty sick. And everybody signed it. Um, obviously, rest in peace, you know what I mean? But uh, this board was sick. And I remember uh, they were numbered. They only made 500. I have number like five and number 76 um, in my archives. And I think, I can't remember who made this thing, this lockup, maybe Ryan Gies. But I don't know, to me, to make a board with the Beastie Boys was like, there's nothing better than that. Here's another board that's actually more recent. This is from 2017. Um, I worked on a project, project with Barbara Kruger, who's one of my most favorite artists uh, and who was actually a super cool person when I met her. Um, and she did an installation down at the LES skate park and it was, it was cool because it's a park that I designed and then she wanted to design this installation in the skate park. So just, I don't know, just talking to Barbara Kruger, it's kind of like talking to the Beastie Boys and doing a collab with them. To me, it's just like, it's first of all, it's like unbelievable because she's, to me, she's so significant in the art world and for her to be psyched and want to do an installation at a skate park and then like, oh, let's make skateboards. So we did clothing with Volcom and we did skateboards and the installation was up, I believe for like six weeks or at most eight weeks. And I actually was able to get a piece of the installation. I know so many people were trying to take it again because it's a Barbara Kruger piece of art. And I was able to remove this piece as well as possible where it didn't break and I'm very psyched. This board is a board, uh, one of the original writers for Fibro, a guy named Pat Gadotti. Um, always been one of my most favorite skateboarders. Um, and I just recently found out that he did have a pro model for screw skateboards that someone at labor found or someone brought it in. Uh, but I always thought he should have had a pro model. And I started this side company called Sticks and Stones where it's kind of like a project where it's kind of like no real direction. It's just kind of doing whatever you want. And his daughter drew him a graphic um, for the board and she drew this owl, his daughter Nina. And she drew the logo uh, with crayons or something, I don't know. I thought there was a top graphic, but I guess not. But uh, I don't know, I just, I'm very psyched on this because it's very, uh, I don't know, it just reminds, it's very nostalgic to me, the graphic, even though it's so modern, you know? This board right here is kind of like a very emotional board that I kept because this is an Akira Ishizawa pro model. Akira passed away a couple years ago uh, from cancer. He was a pro in Japan for Fibro. And he was one of my favorite skateboarders. He was actually probably one of the only people I ever skated with that was older than me. <laughs> but he seemed like he was like 30 years old, but he still killed it. He still was pro. Uh, this was a board we did like kind of like a, um, a tribute board. Uh, and yeah, Akira was dope. And uh, this was a board we did for him. Everybody knows Labor Skate Shop in New York. This is the first board they did. And I actually, why it's significant to me is uh, I met James when he was looking for a space for his store and I connected him with, I believe his name's Ian, uh, who owns the space where he got the store and he eventually got the store. So it was even that much more of a connection for me and significant like, oh, I helped James. You know what I mean? Like, 
to me, that's what skateboarding and like all this stuff is so about is like everybody in our community community helping each other and you know hustling and getting things done. And when you saw labor open and these things were hanging in the window, it was like it couldn't be more perfect. You know, it was like this is exactly that zone. This board, this was a board that we did a collab with the Maloof Money Cup, and. Um, I really don't have that many like signatures besides Gons, but I remember um, when uh, Maloof did that contest in Queens in 2010, wow, it was 10 years ago already, um, they asked me to design the park. I designed the park with Jeff Rowley, and then they had a contest there, and uh, I just happened, I don't know how, I, I remember they were giving these out or something, or someone gave me one, or whatever it was at the time, and I just happened to get everybody's signature. Everybody from like Paul Rodriguez. It's kind of funny because it has my own signature on it, I just realized that. So I think this was like a thing where they, where they had everybody sign it, or I can't remember, but it's so not like me to have a board with signatures, but I'm psyched, like Brand, uh, is it Brandon Safransky or Braden? Braden, Braden Safransky. Um, I don't even know what half of these are, but uh, Sean Malto, Paul Rodriguez, I don't know, I don't know. This is uh, Gavin Maloof. So the Maloof brothers actually signed these. I loved the uh, graphics they did for the Maloof Money Cup. Maloof Money Cup, a lot of people knock on it, but I think it was great. It was good for the city. The city got a park. People got, skaters got money. Uh, it was dope, you know. These two boards, these are recent. This is from Go Skateboarding Day. Probably like, uh, uh, four years ago, five years ago, when Jeff McFetridge, one of my favorite artists, um, did two boards. We did these boards, we gave these away. I don't think a lot of people skated them because people realized that they're so dope and they wanted to hang them up. But he did these two boards. Uh, the significance of this really was, again, that was another park. It was a temporary park that I designed that was in Williamsburg that was up for the summer. And I remember that McFetridge did all these uh, like cutouts that were all integrated into the park. It was very similar to the Kruger thing where it was like, you know, I designed a park and then there were graphics everywhere. And, uh, you know, it's just cool to do that collaboration. It's like the next level collaboration because, you know, usually it's just like, oh, just design the park and it's done. But this was cool to actually that his artwork fit within the park. I don't know, it was, it was just a cool experience and I, I really like these boards. This board is a board Rodney Torres gave me when he turned pro for official. Uh, and I've always been a Rodney Torres fan. I actually gave him his nickname, El Toro. And uh, I don't know, it's just, it's kind of awesome when someone, you know, takes the time, someone that you admire, someone that you saw grow up, someone that you know is so good at skateboarding. Uh, takes the time to give you their, you know, their, their pro model sign. It's, it, to me, it's awesome. So this is downtown uh, at the intersection of Broadway and I don't know the other street, uh, but it's the Bull. Um, yeah, it's, it's kind of like a tourist attraction sculpture that represents uh, Bull Market on Wall Street. Um, and I just realized something that I never realized before, that I believe this is a Colombian flag because I'm Colombian. And I never realized that there was a Colombian flag there. That definitely looks like it's retouched in there because I doubt there would be a Colombian flag on Wall Street. Um, I gotta ask Rodney about that. The first board my son rode, my son's nine years old. He started skating when he was this little. Uh, he's been skating forever. Probably really skating when he was four, I'd say, uh, because it was so much easier to just pull him on a skateboard than to have him be in the stroller because then whenever you got to where you got, you didn't have to deal with the stroller. So I had this like little tiny skateboard made, but this was his first skateboard. And you can actually tell that he just rolled around in it because there's nothing marked on it. You know what I mean? It's just like here and here. Um, and he would always love putting stickers like from, he brought this to uh, Cape Town. I, I didn't even realize what these stickers were until right now. Uh, it was just like all along the way things like I remember Rick gave him this New York skateboarding sticker. Obviously this is the Cinco Barrios. This graphic itself, you can't see it, but this is the Cinco Barrios graphic that Kimu Meyer, AKA Grotesque made. Um, probably 
I can definitely say is my all-time favorite fiber graphic. Uh, it's been in the line the longest out of any graphic. Um, it's so versatile, it's so iconic. To me, you could just run this graphic forever. So this board is another Mark Gonzalez board. Uh, I had the opportunity to connect Gons with uh, the agency I work for to do a to me spot. And kind of the deal was, hey Mark, we want you to be this sort of like ambassador to talk about your perfect journey and then you can go anywhere you want. And I remember he initially, I think he said he wanted to go to like Fiji and we're like, oh, that's dope. Let's go to Fiji. And then he changed his mind and said, I want to go surf in Montauk. Like, so it's like, what, you want to go to Fiji? And then changed his mind, I want to go surf in Montauk. Just hang, hung out with him for the weekend. He did art and a bunch of stuff. He painted a surfboard, went surfing, we went skating. Uh, he got a car he always wanted but this was a thank you gift he gave to me. And I'll probably never ride it because it's hand painted Mark Gonzalez board. Uh, it's kind of strange that he can ride these boards like normal boards, um, but he kills it. I'm sure people have seen the footage. And uh, yeah, it's, it's a crazy looking board, but he kills it on it. Okay, uh, the last board I have is actually a brand new board um, for the side project I'm doing, Sticks and Stones. Uh, I kind of wanted to make uh, a board. There's a lot of artists hit me up and I talked to a lot of artists that always want to do cool stuff and I'm a huge fan of this guy John Horner from the UK. The whole, the, the brief was I want to make a board related to LES. Um, what, what are your thoughts on that? I told him that and then he's like, oh, well, why don't we, why don't you tell me like a bunch of people that have done tricks there or something like that and long story short, it ended up being like the double set and the skate park there, uh, everybody that is, everybody that, not everybody, but most people that have done notable things. Eric Ellington's Frontside Flip, Antonio Durao, uh, uh, Milton Nieves, Dustin Dolan, Luis Tolentino, Harold Hunter, the guy that sells drinks in the summer, whoever that guy was that uh, jumped the stairs on the city bike, Pat Smith, I know Pat Smith was the first person to ollie the double set before there was even a skate park there. Shredmaster Keith, uh, Tyshawn, Nija, Gons, Black Rob, Rob Campbell, um, Alex Olson, Harry Jumunji. He put me in there and he put my son Sheik in there and the woman who's always there collecting cans. So it was kind of awesome as this board evolved and this artwork evolved. Um, oh, and there's actually where that sign was, the Barbara Kruger sign during the installation. And it comes with this like, uh, stickers that, I don't know, this is so like 80s and 90s to me. It's kind of like something that GNS skateboards would have done back in the day. They make these little sticker sheets. So again, uh, this is something that will be in my collection. We'll go with this stuff. Um, that's something I'll definitely keep. One sec, because I have stickers. Uh, I think it's this one. This is the original Fibro sticker that we made. I remember putting these all around the city. I remember it costing like $800 and it felt like it was like a million dollars when I paid that. But uh, this is pretty much every Fibro sticker. These were the first like hang tags we made for clothing, which was kind of insane that we did it because number one, it's a four color sticker. So it was basically a photo and it was a tag and, it, and we put them on each of the clothing. Like we didn't know what we were doing or, or I didn't know what I was doing. Uh, these were stickers that we used for the videos um, to put on the, the side of the thing. Literally, I think Pat Smith did this design. With Fibro, it was like everybody that was involved did something, whether it was packing uh, a sticker or packing a, a box or something. But anyway, this is a box of stickers that should be in like a binder, like a not a sticker. Like how rare is that? You know what I mean? What's up? Oh, just keep it up. Yeah. Like this is all, I mean, a lot of this stuff's fibro stuff, but down on the bottom uh, is an awesome sticker, the Kimu design. Mm. Let me try and find something good. Oh, here's a good one. This is significant because I never knew that Jeff Hartzell, Jeff Hartzell's from Jersey, right? No, I, I'm 99% sure that Jeff Hartzell, yes, is from Jersey. 
And no one ever knew that until like five years ago, besides like the guys that hung out with them, like, uh, you know, Mike V and people like that. But uh, yeah, here's a uh, Brooklyn board sticker. This was a company that um, I was kind of getting flow from. And I'm, his name is, and I can't believe, uh, Dan Zimmer. Uh, he kind of flowed me, I remember he flowed me three boards. He was, I guess he was working for New York and then he wanted to do his own thing. And I rode, I remember riding three of these boards. I remember he gave me one at Union Square and I rode it and I was psyched on it. But it actually, kind of, this was like 93, 94 maybe. I don't know if it has the date on here, but it kind of like got me. I was like, oh, if this guy can do it, then I can do it. And then it kind of like was something that sparked me to start Fibro. Um, this is dope, a Julian Stranger sticker. Here's a good one. Uh, obviously, Santa Monica Airlines. It's a good one. That you know, here's a Silver Star sticker, which is crazy. Like, I don't think anybody even knows what this is. Like, obviously, my generation does. Oh, and here's kind of like a reference that I was talking about before. This is a GNS sticker sheet. And this was kind of like the inspiration for the sticker sheet that I put in this board, you know, in the Sticks and Stones board. So, I don't know. There's a ton of... Uh, I mean, everybody knows this sticker from the 80s. If you skated in the 80s, you knew this brand. It was huge. Uh, the first Nike stickers for, S for SB. These shoes were like tanks. I think they were, weren't these called like the trays or something? Like Zoom, so. I think they were called the tray. yeah, yeah. But they were like bricks. But I just remember it was either Darren or someone from Nike gave them to me and I was like, it was insane. Uh, this is Seamus Deegan. I don't know if you know who he is. He was the team manager for Fibro for a while, one of the original team managers. This was a, um, a website he did, conform.tv. It was kind of like a, uh, 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 it was a skateboarding website kind of type thing before that existed. He was way ahead of his time. Uh, what else? I don't know, there's so much stuff in here. You can just go through this forever. I'll just say the things that I'm psyched on are people that have supported Fibro forever. A Crudco sticker, one of the best shops in Rochester, New York. What's up, Aaron? Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, stickers were a huge part of skateboard culture. Obviously, a Volcom stone. I've been uh, affiliated with Volcom since... I think we just figured it out the other day with Remy. He just did a post. It's 1998, so it's been 22 years. Is that, is that math right? Um, and one of my favorite skate shops, besides uh, Crudco, is Solstice in New Bedford, Massachusetts. Um, I remember Jay would give me probably hundreds of these stickers every time I'd go up there, or we'd do a demo there. They're one of the first shops to carry Fibro. So, yeah, I don't know, there's, I don't know, I would collect every place we go, like, I don't even remember where this is, Intense Energy Skate Shop, like, I don't know where it is, it was in Jersey, I think, but uh, I, I don't think it's there anymore. Oh, it's the area's only pure skate BMX experience, that's what it says. So, this is a cool consolidated sticker. I don't know, I'd, I'd, I'd collect, you know, because you wouldn't, I don't think you'd, a lot of times, oh, this is crazy. Oh, but it's not in here. So this was the first skateboard company I rode for. It was called Screw Skateboards. Uh, like, I don't think anybody knows about this company besides the people that rode for it. Uh, Kenny Hughes, R.B. Umali, Jimmy Chung, uh, Pacadotti, Jason Skipakis. Uh, I know I'm forgetting some people. But uh, this was at trade show. At the trade show, they gave these out, and there was actually a condom inside. It was kind of crazy. It was kind of like, uh, that was cool. But I don't know. To me, it was dope because it was something different, and uh, it was a cool company while it lasted. Uh, oh, here's another RIP Autumn Skate Shop. It seems like, I don't know, I feel like there's a correlation between the shops that give away a ton of stickers and the shops that survive. There is. You know what I mean? Like, I remember, but this, this is a bad example because this shop didn't survive. <laughs> but uh, I don't know, like these Crudco, there was so many, I remember tons of Crudco stickers, tons of Solstice stickers. 
every time. Uh, here's a huge fibro sticker. I remember we, I figured out a way to get big stickers made for cheap <laughs> for fibro. Like, I, I actually don't know. I don't remember. I, I, someone had like a screening thing or something and I was able to get all these. This is a design that uh, Ryan Gies made. That's one of my favorite designs. But anyway, I don't know. So this is my favorite sticker, obviously. These stickers are probably the, might be not the rarest sticker, but you know, some of the rarest stickers. This is, this is 1987 Mark Gonzalez sticker for Vision. Part of the reason, again, why the inspiration for making this sticker pack of all these little things that would be in a skate park, you know, uh, it's kind of like a throwback. This, it's kind of funny, like this is exactly this in my mind, you know? It's like, and I'm psyched that I broke this out because that's exactly what I was thinking about. This is a Fibro Tour, mm, 1999. I don't know if you can see that. This is the Fibro crew in Rochester, New York on a tour. Um, Patrick O'Dell shot these. This is uh, one of my favorite spots I ever skated. It was near Skater Island. It was like this perfect bank to this picket fence. Here's Josh Moretti in Brooklyn skating Nevit Steel's indoor mini ramp that like no one knew existed, which was insane. Here's Aaron Susky at the banks. This is actually, I believe, a Fibro ad. I don't know, I have stuff everywhere. This is the bird shit banks, AKA bleaker banks. Um, that's my uncle's store, Avignon pharmacy right there. Uh, this was the old park, how it was. It was such an amazing spot. Someone just posted the Harold Hunter picture doing a heel flip there, which is like probably my favorite photo. My most favorite photo of this spot ever. Uh, this is the day, the first day I skated with Remy Stratton and he hooked me up with Volcom stuff. Um, Remy actually took the shot. Uh, just to talk a little bit about these photos, stuff I've kept. I don't, it's weird. You'd think I'd have like more photos around the apartment, but I don't. Here's Willie Akers. This, I believe, is shot by Xander. Uh, Alan Ying shot this. This is uh, in Bed-Stuy, a pool, damp pencil in 2004. Uh, this is one of my favorite spots in the city because if you look at that picture, there's no way you think you're in New York City, you know. Uh, Alessandro Zimanetti shot this photo of the Fibro crew. Probably early 2000s, everybody, had a, everybody got a Fibro tattoo and the famous Gons picture, which is one of my favorite pictures, which was actually, I believe, shot for Transworld. Another thing I did, like, anytime someone would come over to my apartment in the village, I would take a photo of literally every single person. Um, it was just, I have these books of Every single, here's Pat Smith. Um, this is Pat Smith in the basement of, in the Fibro. It's funny, the, my uncle's store, I actually, he let me use the basement to run Fibro out of for like more than 10 years. And this was taken in that basement. This is right when Pat Smith got on Fibro. Uh, this is a guy named Saeed, I don't know his last name. He was the manager at one of the first skates, uh, skate shops in New York City called Pro Sports that a lot of uh, people in New York rode for. I think Rodney Torres rode for them. I think he talked about that in his Bob shirt. There's my sister, There's Jim Young. This was taken, I could tell by the graphics, this was the third run of graphics for Five Rose, like 98. Dan Pencil when he was super young. Uh, me, and this is Eric Rawati uh, from Jersey, rode for Underworld Element, he passed away. Uh, he was most insane skater, so good. Here's a picture of Tombo and Susky. There was just always like 10 skateboarders staying with me. <laughs> and there was like, you can see the stack of boards in the back. Like there's probably like 20 boards right there. Uh, there was like two couches in there. It was basically my office and workplace. And it was, it was pretty awesome. It was good times. I would always collect stuff and in the process of collecting stuff, like how do you, like what do you put it in when you collect it? And uh, a guy I grew up with named Rob Mars uh, used to make these scrapbooks 
where he would like collect all this stuff and he'd make these scrapbooks. And I started doing the same thing. Uh, and I literally have these books. I did it for probably like at least 10 years where everything I saved or at wherever I would go, I would save, like if you go to, this is in 1998 uh, at a trade show in Long Beach. And here's Ben Wall who actually made that booth. Um, and this is the line of boards. Here's Andre Page. Um, his girl Jackie that passed away. But uh, yeah, this was actually my hallway. Remember I told you 10 people stayed there? This was the weekend, all outside of my door because I wouldn't let anybody wear shoes in my apartment. So it would just be like 20 shoes and 10 skateboards outside my door. And this weekend was the Brooklyn Banks contest. This was April 4th of 1998. Uh, it's crazy looking at the results of like who won. Sponsored, Ben Wall won, Brian Brown second, Lee Smith third, me fourth, Pete Eldridge fifth, Emmett Bennett sixth, Nardelli seventh, Anthony De Silva eighth. Just seeing all these names is crazy. And then seeing people that weren't associated with Fibro, like Willie Akers tied with Eli Reed, and Willie ended up actually riding for Fibro. Intermediate. So Akira Moat was 13 years old or 15 years old when this contest was. It's just crazy to see that, to have this. This is like a fax we got. There's, and there's a lot, and these books, there's like tons of pages and tons of things. Like this was a trip to Newburgh, actually four years before that. This is in 1994, uh, going to Newburgh with Stevie Williams. I don't know if you can see this picture, how young he is. He's, he's gotta be like 13. I don't know, I wanna, I'll figure it out later. But I can't, I remember Stevie Williams called this kid apple-headed bitch. I don't remember his real name. <laughs> uh, Javier Nunez. Um, I can't remember her name. Jeanette and myself. And this was going to Newburgh. Oh yeah, it says, it's actually, it's so awesome. It says the day the Banks contest was canceled, we went to Newburgh. I actually don't know who took the pictures, you know? But there's a ton. Rodney Torres and Steve Walsh chilling, at, chilling on a hot summer's day at the banks, at the Brooklyn Banks. Look how young Rodney is. And I would take everything everywhere I went. Like you can see here, every time I'd ride a taxi, I would take the sticker from the taxi. Like I would take, I would seriously take everything just to put it in these books. Um, this is a real, this is probably one of the first books because this is a lot, this is, these pictures are really old. This is from 1986 at the Bleecker Banks. Again, my uncle's store right there. Because you got to realize my family uh, owned a dry cleaner in, uh, my mom managed the dry cleaner on 10 Downing Street, which was right across the street from this. So I'd always go there to like work for the summer, like delivering clothes, stuff like that. Um, that's Rob Mars. So I'd always skate there. There was that, there was my uncle's store, there was Joe's Pizza, there was Pro Sports. There was like all this, the village actually back then just, I mean, I still live like, you know, five blocks away, but it was just different. This is an awesome, I don't, oh, this guy, uh, John Engel. He was a BMXer and a, like a BMX photographer and he took the best pictures. He shot this picture. Uh, this is Brian Ince. A lot of the photos in these books were shot by him. A lot later, a lot of the later photos. This is uh, one of the f original Fibro guys, Jim Young. He parked his car there and we were ollieing over it. So ollieing over the wall and over his car. Uh, this is Ben Wall. I don't know who that is. But obviously the times at the banks were like the best times ever. It's kind of funny, this, this, this just shows you how different skateboarding was. Because this is a flyer for a demo at a skate park. And it doesn't even have people's last names. So it just says from five boroughs, even though it was five borough, it just says like Nesto, Alex, and then my full name. It's like so weird. It's obviously Alex Corporan. And then ATM was Mike Bell and Matt Bell. Fucked was Louie Louie or Louie Lou. Uh, American Dream was Spencer Fujimoto. Nice Shoes, Gizmo, Rodney Torres. And then from Screw, Mark Nadelli, but it was Mark Nadelli. Uh, this demo was awesome. And I remember Rodney drew this in the car because it was like a 14 hour drive or whatever. 
because everybody used to call me Conan back then. I don't know why, uh, but Roddy drew this. Uh, it's pretty sick. I don't think this is an actual, no, this wasn't a flyer. This was just something he drew in the car. Another thing, I used to make all these books. Like the actual book, I would make it. And I remember how I made this one. Across the street from my house was, or from my apartment, yeah, they, there was a supermarket there and I would go in there and I would just take tons of um, paper bags. Um, so I'd actually make these books and then I'd bind them and then I'd use shugu to like, I actually don't remember how I did it, how I actually bound it. Oh, here it is actually. You can see it says Pioneer Supermarkets. Uh, this was on the corner. And again, I would always write. So I made this book in 2000, January 12th is when I start. This has to be one of the worst pages I've ever worked on. <laughs> it's just little notes I made about stuff. Um, but I was psyched to make this book and all these things. But this photo specifically, this is Alex Talavera. I'm pretty sure that's his name. Everybody called him Ducky. He was kind of like, uh, I met him just through skating. He'd always skate around the city. I believe, I believe he lived in Brooklyn. Um, I, yeah, I think he lived in Brooklyn. And uh, he was the most amazing ahead of his time skateboarder. Uh, I remember this guy was so good, but he was so, he wasn't, he was kind of like, you wouldn't see him all the time. But when he did show up, even if he didn't have skate shoes on, like I remember skating with him at Union Square and he had like, like dress shoes or whatever you would call that. Like shoes that are leather and wood on the heel. If I had to compare him to someone now, I'd say it's like Shredmaster Keith, where it's someone that their personality is awesome, they absolutely kill it, and you just, you'll never forget them. So this is, again, I have like tons of Five Borough stuff in storage, but this is just stuff I have laying around. These are, I believe these are the first wheels we made. Um, they're 53 millimeter wheels. It's kind of funny because I still ride 53 millimeter wheels, but it was like, you know, now that I look at it, I'm like, this is like a stereo ripoff. But, uh, you know, it was a big deal to make wheels, and I know we sold all of them and sold through, but I think we stopped doing it just because it was like too much of a pain in the ass, too expensive. Uh, here's something that is one of my favorite videos we ever did. Uh, New York, New York. This project took forever. Um, you know, this is Dan Pencil, Charlie Wilkins, Joe Tukmanian, Danny Falla, Willie Akers, and Robert Lim. This is an amazing video um, that I don't know, just this was at a time for Fibro when so many people, this is in 2006, when so many people were involved with Fibro and everybody was like chipping in with Fibro. Uh, to me, this was kind of like the peak of Fibro around this time, I think. <laughs> Bringing us up to the present, like things that I collect, I just got this, um, when was that? Like three months ago, maybe? This was a, uh, Again, there's a theme with all this with Mark Gonzalez, because again, he's like kind of like my idol, been my favorite skateboarder forever. And the fact, and it's just kind of crazy to think about it, that the guy that I liked the most actually ended up living in New York. Like out of all the guys, you know, to me that's, I don't know, that kind of like blows my mind, but this is uh, something he made for the Harold Hunter Foundation for a fundraiser. It's a basketball, he drew some a weird thing on it. But uh, yeah, this is my latest thing to my uh, hoarding uh, of skateboard stuff.